Ah, San Francisco. It's one of the culinary capitals of the world. Welcome to Hungry for Travel TV. I'm Carol Yelverton. We're putting together a pistachio goat cheese pesto and an aromatic pizza as we explore this amazing city. So what can you expect to find there? Everything. It is so much fun there, isn't it? And of course, San Francisco is the anchor of the California cuisine movement, which is all about fresh flavors and fusion flavors and making beautiful presentations with food. So that's truly the inspiration for this pesto I want to show you. It's kind of different from the, the pine nut, basil, garlic one that we all love. It's a little subtler, and it's got a lot of um, really beautiful, uh, deep, soft flavors to it. So let me show you how we put it all together. We're starting with pistachios, first of all, which are just, oh my gosh, when you smell them, they just have such a lovely, sweet smell. So what I've done here is I've taken about four tablespoons of just pistachios, unsalted, and I've ground them up in the blender. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of salt, and again, if you have salted pistachios, you know, obviously compensate for that. And I like white pepper here because it really does kind of work I think in a much nicer way uh, with the pistachio. So a little bit, white pepper goes a long way, so we don't need to kill it. And I've got some fresh thyme. Again, a beautiful complimentary flavor. So I put those all in together, and then I have about a quarter a cup of shallots. I just wanna show you, you know, I just cut them 
uh, you know, just in, in kind of large chop way, peeled them and chopped them, and again, about a half cup, because, you know, shallots can be little or big, they go all over the place. So I'm just going to do an initial um, blend on this. So I'll get that moving. And it needs a little help, because we're using a blender today, because actually my food processor broke, if you want to know the truth. <laughs> but this is going to do fine. Blender always does fine to make pesto, too. So, we'll grind that up. And we'll get that all ground, and then we put in about six ounces of goat cheese. And the goat cheese and pistachios and thyme, that's what really makes this whole thing come alive and happen. So that goes in, put in the juice of about a lime, uh, lemon rather. Uh, you can try lime too. I've tried lime, or you could use a mix, but actually I think the lemon has kind of a brighter, stronger flavor. And again, if you you have a lemon that doesn't have a lot of juice, just you're looking for maybe, you know, uh, you know just a, a sense that you have a good enough amount of, of lemon in here. So then... We're going to add two cups of spinach, and then we're going to put in two cups of basil. And I'm kind of condensing this. When you do the recipe, do two and two. Um, so the spinach is kind of nice and aromatic, and then the basil just kind of dresses it all up and it gives it that, that warm flavor that we love from basil. So we let that kind of all happen. And then I'm going to go fast because this is going to take a little while. I don't want to hold you up. So I'm just going to, obviously, when, when it's all blended and it's really all come together, um, we're going to add a little cheese to it just to get that in there and add that flavor. And this is about a half a cup of Parmesan cheese. And we'll let that go. And then we have the olive oil. And we'll put about a half a cup of olive oil in. And we're just going to stream it in. There are so many ways to use this pesto. It's a terrific dip with breadsticks or tossed with some warm white cannellini beans. Let me show you how I've tossed it together with pasta and zucchini spirals, two of my favorite things. I layered the zucchini on the top. I sauced the pasta and the zucchini separately, then garnished with basil and pistachios. And look at the pretty green color. I just love the tangy creaminess of the goat cheese with the pillowy mellow softness of the pistachios. It's such a beautiful pesto combination. The spinach and the basil add earth and that lemon just brightens everything up and brings the whole thing together. You know, there's so much happening in San Francisco all the time, and there's a real street vibe you get when you're there just as you move around the city. Travel vlogger Kevin Penrose has really captured a feel of this edgy urban spirit. Walk 
Thanks, Kevin. That was a great video. You know, we have this beautiful pesto. Why not make a perfect pizza? It's very California, very San Francisco. And so I want to walk you through some steps um, to use this pesto with the kind of um, foods on it that are really going to make it pop and all work together. So right now we have our pizza dough. It's all spread out on a stone. And it's looking good. And so I've got our pesto. Look, it's finally made. <laughs> and we just spread it all out on top. Isn't it pretty? It's so nice. And it's just, mm -hmm. uh, boy, when people have this on the pizza, it just all really works together because it's warm and, you know, just flavorful. And it just, it really is nice for folks. Uh, I've had a lot of compliments on that which is why I want to share it with you. So what I like to do is put rings, whole rings of onion all around. And the reason I like to do that is, first of all, it's pretty, it's circular. These are very lightly uh, sliced onions, very thinly sliced. I used a mandolin slicer to do this. So you can see they just come out in a way that um, they're nice and delicate on the pizza. So I just want to cover it all around with these little pieces of onion, little slices here. And then what I've done is I've done kind of the same thing with uh, red pepper. I've sliced it just, you know, a little, little circular fashion like this, very, very thinly. And I like to just put that again all around. And so you can see we get this nice pattern on the pizza, you know, so it's really pretty and colorful. And you have the red onion and you have the red pepper and the green pesto. And so it just makes this really, really pretty little uh, presentation when it's all done and it's it's delicious too and the flavors work so well together. I like to um, just put a little uh, parsley on top, not too much, but just, just for a little other flavor element. And then the thing that I really love doing, and you're gonna love too, is I take little mounds of ricotta and I put them all around. And when the pizza comes out of the oven and this ricotta is just warm and melty, um, it's just really delicious. It's really amazing. So you'll have the goat cheese in the pesto and then you'll have this ricotta on top, and it's gonna be something really, really delicious. So this is gonna go in a 425 degree oven for about 20 minutes. It depends how thick your crust is. If you have a really thick crust, it'll probably go in for 30 minutes. So while that is cooking, I do something else. Um, I mix together panko breadcrumbs with Parmesan cheese, and about three or four minutes before the pizza's ready to come out of the oven, I sprinkle this on top. So this has already been in the oven. We'll say I ta I've taken it out. Again, I'm trying to speed this up so we get through the recipe really fast. So um, I've taken it out, it's almost done, and then I put these beautiful panko crumbs with Parmesan all around. And what will happen is when it goes back in, it crisps up. So you get a whole other texture, a whole other layer of flavor, um, and it just makes it really incredibly delicious. And then, just to finish it off, look at these beautiful, beautiful ground pistachios. You can just see the pretty color, and they're so nice. And so again, these are gonna go over the top, so you just get that kind of flavor profile of the pistachio. You don't forget about it, it doesn't get lost, and it just really adds so much to this pizza. So this is what it, it takes just to, to put this together. You can see it isn't a hard thing to do. You just get it in the oven, and now take a look at the finished product. So I've drizzled it with a little olive oil as it comes out of the oven. It gives it a nice sheen and the crumbs, they're just so, just so delicious and have great texture. The smooth ricotta, mild peppers, the onions, the toppings aren't overwhelming. As I said, they really complement those intriguing tastes of the pesto. So it's really good. I hope you'll try this one. It's all very San Francisco. Now, you know, this city has such history when it comes to food. No matter where you eat or where you go, it's always delicious. Hi there, I'm Marcia Goliardi. I'm a restaurant columnist, local food writer, bohemian and resident of San Francisco for over 20 years. We are off to Yank Sing, which makes what I think is probably the best uh, Xiaolong Bao dumplings in the city.
Yangtze has been open since 1958 and it's a family owned restaurant. They're currently in the third generation of the family. So it is my great honor to be here at lunch with Mrs. Cecilia Chang, who has been our beacon of Chinese cuisine in San Francisco since 1959. So Yangtze makes this fabulous chili pepper sauce, which you can buy and bring home with you. And I always have it in my pantries. We just finished our dim sum feast at Yank Sing, and now we are off to Sam's Grill, right in the heart of the financial district in downtown. So one of my favorite things about Sam's are these booths. They're perfect for a private lunch, a meeting, birthday party. here at Sam's Grill with owner Peter Quartaroli, who has been here for 22 years. We've been in San Francisco since 1867. So a thing that I love about Sam's is you can come here and learn a lot about San Francisco history because some of the waiters have been here since. There is much a part of history in San Francisco as I think anybody else in the city. It's Stefano, he's been here 18. Giovanni, he's been here 42. They're just, we love having all those guys. So here we are at the Big Four for a little taste of Knob Hill life. I'm thirsty. <laughs> So when you want to slip out of time and go back to turn of century San Francisco, the Big Four is totally the spot. You can order a classic cocktail like the Martinez. So I'm here with Big Four's executive chef, Kevin Scott. So what do you love about the San Francisco food scene and what do you think makes it unique? The one thing that comes to mind right away is this city draws so much talent from all over. And so people can really uniquely express themselves with food here in a way that maybe in other places it's not really possible. What do I love about San Francisco? I love the beauty that surrounds me every day. I love the freedom I have to be whoever I want to be, to create my own job, which brings me so much joy. I love the community that I live in here. I love that I get to write about the amazing food here. I love that I get to share this. I love you, San Francisco. So it's a food lover's paradise, isn't it? Thanks so much for being with us as we've explored San Francisco and all the wonderful culinary elements of this special city. I'm Carol Yelverton. Until I see you next time, stay hungry for travel.